Okay, so this is the third tutorial in the Action Script 3 for Games series. Now my nose is a little stuffy here. I did some traveling and I don't know if I caught something, but sorry about that. So uh, in this third tutorial, which is an intro to variables, and just like functions, which I know I said I was going to get into writing our own functions in this tutorial, we're going to get into that a few tutorials down the road and hopefully tie everything together. Uh, and I'll, I think you'll get a lot more out of it that way. So introduction to variables. Just like functions, variables are one of the most fundamental aspects of programming. You can't do much without knowing about these things. So here we've got our same project file you're used to with our dynamic text box in the, in the center. Right now it's just set, I put in a stop command and I have that same hello underscore text for into the text box, dot text, hello world. So as you can see, I render it and it's spitting out the same thing that we're used to. So now we're gonna create a variable since that's what this tutorial is about, right? So here we go, var, let's call it text. The type of this variable is going to be a string because it's going to go into a text box. A string string means text. It's the same thing. But you have to refer to it by string in the program. But, but it's text. So here's our setup here. So we're going to write hi. We're, we're, so what we're doing here is creating a variable called text. It's of type string. This is the type. And the string that we're storing in this variable is high, surrounded by quotes. Just like here, any anything you want to be counted as text and not... Just anything you want to be taken literally as text in ActionScript should have quote marks around it. If, if I wrote hello world over here like that, the program is going to think that hello world is a variable that I've created. By putting it in quote marks, it knows that I'm telling the program, this is text, just spit it out as is. So, so what we've done here, forget about this line for now. Let's, let's, let's break this down really quick. We're creating a variable. This var is all you need to tell the program you're making a new variable. You only write this the when you're creating that variable. After that, I can refer to it as by its name, which is text in this case. The colon here separates the name of the variable from the type of object it's going to be, which in this case is simply a string, a piece of text, which we can change whenever we want. The starting value of this, as you can see, is high. So instead of spinning out in our dynamic text box, which again, still is set to hello world, still set to that, as you can see here, we're gonna instead tell our dynamic text box to display the text of our text variable. So dynamic text box, text property of the text box is equal to text which is our variable. So you can guess now what it's going to say. Hi, which is what we set it to now. So now if you notice, I'll change this to anything and it's going to automatically update. Hi again. So as you can see, it's, it's referencing this. It's referencing this value here. So what we can do, and to show, you, to show you that you can change things around however you like, let's change the value of text. Text is now going to equal goodbye. A little uh, throwback to anyone who's old enough to remember AOL. Uh, goodbye. So you've got, that's what it's now equal to. There it is right there. 
So again, this, since this is a dynamic text box, it could be changed whenever we want, or by our user, actually, um, which would be a little more complicated. So that's the basic concept of a, of a, a variable and specifically as a string. Now, how about we show you a few different types. So we're, we're gonna ignore this text box for now. Um, we're not even gonna reference it at all. We're gonna just use a trace statement, which is the most simple function that I showed you in the first tutorial. It doesn't get any simpler than this. This, just a reminder, this writes information to the screen for, for you. It does not, no trace commands, will show up to someone who's playing your game, someone who's reading your website. Trace commands are for the programmer to see various pieces of information that they want to see. It's, it's a form of simple debugging. So, so we're gonna, just like we would with our text box, we trace the value of text, which is still gonna be goodbye but it's going to appear here because it's, it's, an, it's an output for us. It's not part of our movie. It's, it's sort of like a behind the scenes message to let you know what's going on. So, so let's, let's get rid of, let's start over with this variable so you can get an idea of the power of variables. So instead of a string, we're going to create a new variable called num, number, this is a shorthand, and it's going to be of type integer, which means a whole number, including zero. It could be zero, it could be negative 12, it could be 107. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, it just it has to be a whole number. If you want to use a number with decimal points, you use this class, but we're not going to get to that now. There's an actual class called number which is for, you know, 5.5, negative 12.7. You need to use, if you want decimal points, you need to use the number class. We don't want that for now, we're keeping it simple. So we've, we've created a variable, its name is num. The left side of this equation here is always the name. And then when you see the colon, that separates the name on the left from the type of variable that it is, which is an integer in this case. So I'm going to set it to, why not five? It's a good number. So instead of tracing this no longer existing variable, we're going to trace num, our new variable here. I'm going to save because it's a habit, an erotic habit. So what we've done is we've spit out, as you can see up here, five. I'm going to try to make the text a little bigger. Sorry, bear with me. Let's put it up to 18. There you go, a little bigger here. Um, so once again, we spit out the number five, which we now have an integer variable. We can make, I mean, there there's a hundred or more built-in types of classes that you can uh, make variables of, and you can make var variables instances of your own cl uh, classes as well when you start writing your own. So I want to I want to make a clear distinction here. Um, what we set our what we set our initial value to can be changed whenever we want, and it can also be referenced. The current state can be referenced whenever we want. So, for example, num equals six. Trace num. Num, uh, num equals seven, trace num. So just so you can see all the changes, our initial value is five, then we change it to six, 
we trace it again, we change it to 7, we trace it again. So you can guess what we're going to see up here. 5, 6, 7. Right there. We're changing the value and it only can store, a variable can only store one value at a time. Uh, otherwise it's confusing and it's not very useful to you, is it? It needs to be one thing at one time. And that's a basic sense of what a variable is. And you're going to see as we go on how useful this is. I can't understate it. I can't overstate it enough. Excuse me. Uh, it's it's just crucial. Functions, variables, loops, which we're going to get into later, and arrays. If I had to pick four things, are the core in events five. We'll say that. So let's say again, functions, variables, loops, arrays, and events. And event listeners that go with them. Those are the most fundamental building blocks of ActionScript. And we're going to, I'm going to piece these things together and we're going to put them together in small ways and build on that. And hopefully that'll work. So please leave comments and let me know if it is working or if it's not working. All right. Thank you for watching.